you want to prepare you today? Be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Lord, for you, my soul says yes. 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 Sanctuary. Lord. Lord. If you would turn to your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. It's the first book of the New Testament. Should be easy to find. But if you cannot find it, you can go to your table of contents and you can look up the name Matthew. And there you will find it. If you still cannot find it on the table of contents, you can lean to your neighbor and ask them, can you help me find Matthew? And if you still cannot find it, I will pray for you. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. We begin reading at verse 24 through 30. And then we will skip down to verse 36 and read through verse 43. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads as thus. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, 
Did you not sow good seed in your field? He then, how then does it have tares? He said to them, and the enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with in. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let's skip down to verse 36. It reads, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so will be in the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out all of the kingdom, all, to, all things that, off, that offend. And those who practice lawfulness and will cast them into the, fur, the, the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the son of the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear. Amen. Before you see, before you sit, I want to pray with you. My topic today is why do bad things happen to good people? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time, oh God, just to hear your word, Lord God. For God, all it takes is one word, oh God, that will change our life forever. So God, we're coming, oh God, just to hear a word from you, Lord God. I pray, God, that you decrease me, oh God, and that you might increase today, Lord God. So, so, God, that they hear none of me, O oh God, and all of you, Lord God. Right now, God, we thank you, O oh God, for your word, and we praise your name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go to your seat, tell, tell, ask somebody, why do bad things happen to good people? My brothers and my sisters, I, I, I'm sure you've often asked this question to yourself. I'm sure you, you've been through things in your life and, and, you, and you wonder and you wonder and you wonder, why do bad things happen to good people, to, to good people? It's, 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 it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling because we try our best and, 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 and I'm seeing you, you do the right, try and do the right thing. And, and, and it seems like suddenly things begin to fall apart. They, 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 you, you feel like that you got your eyes dotted and, and your T's crossed and all your Q's beside your U's and, and, and you assume that everything is going to be all right but just things begin to happen in your life that you can't explain and, 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 or, or you might be wondering why, why did I have to grow up like that? Why do I have to grow up with, 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 without a mama or why do I grow up without a daddy? And, and, and you often wonder, why, 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 why didn't I have that type of life or that type of family? Why, why did I have to, to, to go through those struggles in my life just to get where I'm at today? And you often wonder, why did I have to go through that? But today we're going to learn in, in, in this text why. why? And I'm sure you wonder, you look and you're like, how in the world did he get that topic from this text about wheat and tares? Wheat and tares. Good things, bad things. We, we, let's, let's, let's walk our way through this. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that because the scripture is going to talk about that. So in this scripture, in this text, we see Jesus. He's 
he's, 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 he's just preaching and teaching in chapter 12. He was in a house and the house got full. So chapter 13, he decides, I'm going to go out of the house. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out on the sea in a boat on a ship. And the multitude that, that was around listened to him preach and teach are on the seashore. And so he he begins chapter 13 by talking about the 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 sowing of the sea, the sowing of the sea. Y'all remember the story. So he talks about the, the, the sower, the sower. He, he sowed some seeds and some of the seeds fell on the wayside on the wayside and some of the seeds they fell on stony ground and and then some of the seeds they fell they fell on 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 on, on a bunch of thorns and thorns and then some of the seeds fell on the good ground and then he goes to explain this parable goes to explain this parable he, he talks about that, that that the seeds that fell on, on the wayside those seeds were eaten up by the birds and that's that's like a christian who who, 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 who the word got on them, but they didn't receive the word. And so it was taken and it was stolen from them by the enemy. Then he, then he begins to talk about the seeds that fell on the stony ground. The stony ground Christians, those are the ones who, who got the word. They got it real quickly on Sunday morning. And they went out talking about Jesus and said, thank you, Jesus, for the seed that you gave me, all the good words you gave me. I, and they ran with it and they ran with it. But and then it took root just, just barely on the stony ground. And then when the sun came down, when the problems happened, and the problems came of the world, then that, 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 that seed withered away and it died. Then he talks about the, 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 the seed that fell in the thorns. It began to grow, but, the, but as, 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 as they got around their friends who wasn't saved yet, and they got around people who talked about Jesus, and they, they didn't they believe that of what was being said, that that, that, that seed and that, 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 that plant that grew was choked out. It was choked. Didn't grow anymore and it died. Then he talked about the seed that fell on the good ground. The good ground. You know the good ground. The good ground is when you, when you, when you, when you come into the church and you, you come in just for one word. You're not, you're not coming to see what anybody got on. You're not coming to see what, what, what nobody said or, or, who, or who's coming in or who, who you didn't know or any guests who's coming to you. You're coming to hear a word. That Christian, that Christian, where, 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 when, the, when the word hits them, they, they, they take it, they receive it. They take it on an inside and it grows and, and it matures and, and the root system gets deep inside of them. And they begin to worship and they begin to praise and they begin to come to Bible study on Wednesday nights. That seed that, 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 that grows on the inside of them, that's good ground, that good ground seed. So he, be, so he explained this, this parable, this parable to to, 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 to the people, to the disciples. And, and then he moves on. He talks about the parables and why he talks in parables. And then he moves on to this parable about the wheat and the tear. The wheat and the, and the tear. It, I love the way Jesus teaches because he uses parables. He, well, let's, let's start. He, he, he says at the beginning of, of, this, of this text, he says, Another parable he puts forth to the people. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like. Let's stop there. Jesus speaks to us in, in parables because he wants us to understand kingdom business. The simple definition of a parable is a, a, a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Now, 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 if, if Jesus begins to te teach us in his language, then we're going to be confused and, and, and bewildered. So Jesus teaches us in parables. So he, he uses he uses the term. He uses the term the kingdom of heaven is like. So it, it, what he does is he uses something that we understand. To teach us something that only he understands. He, he sort of breaks it down for us in bite-sized pieces. Now, I teach sixth grade science in middle, in middle school. And I sort of understand what he's doing now because when I taught high school, I could just give them a topic and say, hey, this is what it is. Read it. Do it. Now I got to spoon feed because 
the things that I'm trying to teach them, they might not understand if I talk in too big of words. I'm going somewhere. So Jesus uses parables to teach us the things that he wants us to know that we can go out and apply them to our lives. So, 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 so he's, he says the kingdom of heaven is like a man that sows good seed in his field. Now, the reason why he uses sowing and, and, and agriculture in, in, his, in his, this parable is because those are the things that those people back in Palestine knew about in this day. They knew about, they knew about the sowing and the reaping. They understood that if I sow good, if I sow seed into a ground, I should reap a harvest in the end. They understand that. They understand that if I take this seed that I've got, that I've traded for, and I, and I dig up my ground, and I put the seed in my ground, that in the end, when I've watered it, and, 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 and I've, I've put fertilizer on it, and I've done all I had to do with it, that it's going to grow into a field of what I planted. So he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, his field. Now, 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 now see, in this parable, this parable, Jesus, it, normally Jesus doesn't explain parables. Normally what he do is he'll throw it out there and, you, and, and then you got to pray on it and you got to explain it to yourself. But he was generous this time and he said, you know what, I'm going to explain it to you right over here. So he takes, he takes the good seed. So now, 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 now the way, the way, the way this, this, this prayer was put together, he says, now the man who sowed the seed is, is, is Jesus. Now, this is good seed. The seed Jesus sowed is good seed. It's good seed. It's good seed. It's good seed. And he sowed it in his own field. Now, now, now explain, explain the field is the world. So he sowed good seed, me and you, in the world. He sowed the good seed in the world. But as we slept, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy sowed tears. He threw out tears, put tears. Now notice, now notice, now notice, the owner planted good seed. Good seed in his field. And then the devil came along and sowed tares. He planted good seed in his field, in this world that he made. Then the enemy came along and he sowed tares. Now, notice the story. Notice the story. Jesus talking about himself sowing the good seed. Now, when he sold the seed, he sold, sold the seed, sold us into to this, this, to, to this world. And so, let's talk about Satan. Satan, Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan knows that the seed he sold in the world was good seed. Satan understands I can't do anything about this seed that he sowed, but I can distract the seed that he sowed. I can't attempt to destroy the seed that he sowed. So that's my plan to do is, is to attempt to destroy the seed that he sowed. Now, this could be confusion to you because it's like, why am I dealing with this thing? It's like, it's like we're caught up in the middle of something that we knew nothing about. It all began, it all began in heaven a long time ago. Satan, known as Lucifer, thought he was big and bad. He was the worship leader. He was the worship leader. Lucifer, the worship leader, but he, but he got the big head and got kicked out. So, so now, kicked out to hell, so now he's now called Satan. Now called Satan. So now we're caught up in the middle of something that's between God and Satan. We're in the middle of a war and didn't even know it. So why do we wonder why bad things happen to good people? 
we're in the middle of a war. There's a war going on between God and Satan. And we're just caught up in the middle of it. Satan is mad at God because we took, because we took his place. He was up there being the worship leader. And then now his point, now what we're trying to do now is, 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 is make us be ashamed. Try, try, trying to put the blame on us. He said, look at what, what they're doing. Why would you have them do, be the worship leaders for you? So we're looking at the seed that he planted in the good ground. So now, now as we're looking at this, as, we, as we're looking at this, as we're looking at this, he says that as we slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Satan's never going to come to you up in your face. Satan always sneaks in the back door. Always sneaks in unaware. Because he knows that he knows that all we got to do is call on the Lord, and he'll fight our battles. So he has to sneak in the back door to do anything, do, any, do we have any tactics or, 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 or any schemes that he has to put on us. And so, so Satan sneaks in the back door and sows tears, bad things among the wheat. But, 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 but. When the grain sprouts up and the crop produces a crop, the tares will appear. Let's talk about the tares. Let's talk about the tares. Physically, a tear is very similar to wheat. Very similar to wheat. Sounds like sin. So sometimes, sometimes, sometimes in your mind you think I'm doing the right thing. That might be a tear. A tear has a lot of the physical attributes of the wheat. But, when, but, but as the tear grows, it becomes different than the wheat. The wheat is heavy and it droops. But the tear stands up straight and is poisonous. Just like sin. Sometimes... We think we, that, that, that we, we, got, we got all, we, we do one little thing and, and it's, it's grow, it seems like it's going pretty good. But eventually, that, that sin, that the small sin will sprout up and it'll be look different than, than the wheat in your life. So, he sowed tares among the wheat. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appear. The tears also appear. Now, let's discuss. Come here, Job. Let's talk. Let's talk about Job. Talk about Job. Job was minding his own business, hanging out at his house, chilling out, no problems going on. Had his wife and kids, and everything was his animals and stuff. And then all of a sudden, the tears came through. Because there, there was a meeting that he had no, no idea about. There was a meeting in heaven. When God and all the angels came together, and so did Satan. He asked Satan, what are you doing? Seeking to and fro who I may devour. Then he said, have you considered my servant, Job, a war? We're in a war, y'all. We're in a war. He, have you considered my servant, Job. Maybe you today. Have you considered my servant, Bo? Have you considered my servant, Tony Petway? Have you considered? A good question is, are, are you considered? That's, that, that's a good question. Are you considered? But we're in a war. And we didn't even know. But then Satan said, I, I can't get to Job because you built a hedge 
around him. You build a hedge around him, a head around, hedge around him. But actually, he's built two hedges around him. One around his physical and then one around his spiritual. Because God said, you know what? Tell you what, I, I'll take down one hedge. But you can't touch his life or his soul. I, I got that. That's mine. But you can touch his body. So we're in a war, people. But the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Or against principalities and powers or against the rulers of the darkness of this age. But all we got to do is stand. Be still. And God will fight your battles. Now, now, now. He's, he sowed tares with the wheat. So tears with the wheat. And so and so and when, 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 when this happened, the servants, the servants, the church folk came to him. He said, they said, sir, they're trying to question God. Didn't you? Now, I saw you. Didn't you sow good seed in the ground? Look like it's all messed up now, see? But didn't you serve good? Didn't you sow good seed in, in, in the ground and, and it was in, in, in your field? So if you did that, now how do we have tears? I thought you were doing the right thing. You know, church folk do sometimes. Church folk do sometimes, you know. Be questioning stuff. I thought you were going to help me. I thought you were going to save me one day. I thought you were going to get me a new car. I thought you sowed good seed in the field. But now I see tears. Why does bad stuff happen to me? I praise your name every day. I pray three times a day. I prayed in the morning, I prayed in the noon, I prayed in the evening time. So why is this bad stuff happening to me? Why I got to deal with all, all these stresses and, and trials and tribulations? Why? Then, then, then they said, then they said, since the terrors are there, he said, they said to him, should we go out and pluck it up? But then he says, but then Jesus says, an enemy has done this. Enemy, enemy has done this because he knows the seed that he, he planted was his seed and it was good seed and he planted good seed in the ground. Now, now Satan understood that he can't do anything with that seed. He knew the seed was good. All he could do was trouble the seed. All he could do was, 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 was distract the seed. All he could do was, was plant the tares in the ground, in the ground. So they said, they said, they said, should we go gather him up? Jesus says, no. No. Lest you gather up the tares and uproot the wheat also. Let's, let's think about Paul. Paul asked Jesus something too. About the thorn inside. He said, he prayed three times. He said, no, my grace is sufficient. For when you're weak, I'm strong. When you're weak, I'm strong. Even Paul's thorn couldn't be removed. That's why they couldn't remove the tears because they had to. So he said, let them, let them grow together. Now that's confusing. Why would you allow the tares to grow with the wheat? Why would you allow the bad things to happen to the good people? Why would you allow the bad seed to happen with the good seed? Why would you allow why would you allow calamity to come to your good people? Why would you allow stress to, 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 to bog down your people? Why? 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 Why would you do that? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you got to pray and leave it alone. Because sometimes, sometimes the tears that are entangled in your life were allowed to happen to make you who you are today. 
sometimes the terrors that you, that you have to deal with, the, the evil things, the bad things you have to deal with, made you what God wants you to be. If God would have put you in, in, in the best house with the best family, you may have turned out, you may have praised him the way you praise him now. You may have been doing things that you can do now. It's all because of the tears. The tears can sometimes make you better. So he said, let them, let them grow together. Let, let them grow together. Let, let them be together. Let, 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 them, let them hang out together. Just maybe, maybe your testimony might turn a tear around. You know, there, there are physical tears and there are people tears too. Because remember in the story it said, the parable it said that the tares were sown by the evil one. Now, now he could have sown distress, but he could have sown people too. People that, that come distract you and mess you up. But just maybe, just maybe, just maybe that, that your testimony, your, the life you live might, might, might turn a tear around. So just think about it. If he tore the tear out and threw that tear away, then that tear may not have a chance to, to, to come and know Jesus. For himself. So he said, let them grow together to the harvest. The harvest. What's the harvest? The harvest. That's, that's the end time. That's when he comes back. You know, we, we, we as Christians try to try to solve things ourselves. We figure, I, I know better. I, I'll pull it on out. We'll, we'll rush and try to fix it. Try to fix the problem ourselves. But if God meant for it to be fixed, he would have fixed it itself already. Sometimes God allows the tears to grow so you can grow. Because you have to understand that the tears aren't meant to kill you. They were only meant to distract you. They were, they, were, they were only meant, they were only meant to, 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 to take you off course. And God allowed it so that you could start praying more. God allowed it so you could be more humble. God allowed it so you would praise him. So why the tears? Why the tears? Why the tears? Because God cares about you. Because you're valuable. Think about this. If, 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 if. You weren't valuable. Satan wouldn't bother you. There's value in the wheat. That's why he sold it. That's why people back in that day sold wheat because they, they took the wheat and they sold the wheat. So they could trade the wheat. That was their money system. And there was value in the wheat. The only reason God is, I mean, the only reason Satan is messing with you is because you're valuable. You're valuable. I know I'm not shouting. I'm not trying to shout in sermon today. But I want you to get I want you to, I want you to understand that you're valuable. Just because bad things happen to you don't take away from the fact that you're valuable. They're happening because you're valuable. Because Satan knows God got a plan. And if he can get in and distract you and take you off course and mess you up and, and think you're not valuable, then you won't shine like God meant for you to shine. So, God, Jesus sowed good seed in his field. So good seed in his field. Then the enemy came and sowed tears. Evil things sold it amongst the wheat. But instead of God telling the servants to pluck it out, he said, let it grow together. That, that's, that's sticking with me. Because it confused me at first. It's like, why would you let it grow together? Now, 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 now about agriculture, when, when the wheat grows with the tear, the, the, the roots entangle together. They entangle together. So when you look at this, when, when, when you look at this, 
Sometimes our sin entangles us. But God, but God, the seed that God planted, that didn't change. It's just some of that sin entangled against the roots. Imagine if God pulled the tares. He would uproot the wheat also. He would uproot you also. But he allowed you to grow despite your sin that has entangled you. So he said, let it grow together. Let it grow together. I know you've done some bad stuff, but let it grow together. I, I, know, I, I, I know you've been smoking some stuff, but let it grow. Let it grow together. I know you've been with that girl and 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 that girl, but let it grow. Let it grow together. I know you've been lying and cheating, but let it grow together. I, 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 I know you was clubbing last night and came to church this morning, but let it grow. Let it grow together. Because he planted good seed in you. He planted good seed in you. He planted good seed in you. But the enemy came and he sowed a tear. But don't pull the tear out. Let it grow together. Let it grow. Let it, let, 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 let it grow. Let it grow together. Let it grow together. Sometimes the, the, the tears will make you stronger wheat. Sometimes the tears, even though it's bad, it'll make you better. In this life, in this life, we, we, there, there, will, there will be tears, but those, but those things in life that try to trip you up and take you off your course. But I, I know a man who came to give us life and died and rose to give us more abundant life. His name is Jesus. That even though we have tears, we still can grow. Even though we have hard times, even though we can't understand it and we don't know why, we still got Jesus. Because the Bible says in the end days, he'll do the separating. We can't do the separating. We'll mess it all up. But he going to do the separating. He'll, he'll, he'll fix it. He'll, 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 he'll untangle it. He'll pull it apart in the end days. If you would stand with us this morning, I, I'm done. I'm done. Praise God. Jesus came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. He didn't come to destroy us. He came to give us life. He figured if I can, if, if, if I, if I can just give them life, they'll praise me. He figured if I can just give them a chance, they'll praise me. But he has to allow the things to come. Because if, if God never allows sickness to come, how would we know he, he could be a healer? If God never allowed bad things to happen, how could you know we could, he could turn it around? If God never allowed negative, negative bank accounts, how would we know that he could be a provider? If God didn't allow it, how would he, we know that he could do it? Because he's able. He's able. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why would he let the tears grow with the wheat? It was necessary. It was necessary. It was necessary that you, you came up in the house you came up in. 
Necessary that you had the children you had. Necessary that, 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 that your parents were the parents you had. It was necessary. I know it hurts sometimes that, that you deal with things in your life, but it was necessary. It made you who you are today. I know it hurts right now. People going through things that you don't understand. And you wonder why me. But it was necessary. It was necessary. You may never understand why it happened that way. But just know today that it was necessary. If God had not allowed that to happen, you couldn't have what you have today. If God gave you everything you ever wanted, you wouldn't know that he could work it out for you. It was necessary. church are open. If there be one today who is wondering why these bad things are happening to me, just know that it's necessary. But today, accept Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if thou wilt confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. It's easy to say, I believe in him. You can say that, and it looks good on the surface. But the next part, it says, believe in your heart. There's two parts to this. Say it with your mouth, then believe it in your heart. church home I recommend New Jerusalem is the best church on this side of heaven you need a covering you need a covering the same way you need an umbrella when it's raining outside you need a church home to cover you that prays for you and when you're stressed out you can call on them be seated. Sister, he will give new life.
Praise God for the word. Praise God for the word. Amen, 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 amen. I know y'all want to hear somebody shouting today. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. I, I didn't have a shout in me today. But I had a word in me today. I just pray you were blessed today. I pray that somebody received something today. Something to chew on. You know, you know how, how a cow is in, 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 in the field and he chewing on something all the time. That curve. Just chewing on something. So just had something to chew on this week. So if you're ever wondering why it happened, it's necessary. It'll make you better. It'll make you better. It's going to make you better. Pastor did want me, he did want me to say this day. He wanted to say, he wanted to let you guys know about the, the uh, family fun day and, and, and also the taste of New Jerusalem. That's going to be next, next Saturday. Next Saturday, next Saturday. That's going to be, there will be jumping for the kids and uh, brother, brother, brother Fly tie back there going to be, going to be, uh, Rocking the turntables for us. Rocking the turntables. He hit us with, with, with the, the funky beat. Amen. Amen. I got a funky beat. Got some food. Uh, there will be food tables set up so you can enjoy the different different uh, menu, the different cuisines that we have out there. Uh, also, the highlight of the day will be the water challenge. Water challenge. Reverend T coming back. Reverend T coming back. We dunk some water on him. Amen. Amen. Amen coming back. The cost will be $5, $5, and the proceeds will go towards the monetary gift for First Family, for the First Family. Um, be next Sunday, we celebrate uh, passing the family anniversary. Uh, don't, don't, don't forget, don't forget that we'll be asked to donate $16 per individual, $32 per couple, and each ministry is asked to give $265, that is six, $16 for each year the pastor has been pastoring in New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Amen, amen, amen. If all hearts and minds are clear. Oh, revival. Revival next week, too. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Right? Excuse, I'm sorry. See, I messed that up. My bad. My bad. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Y'all come on now. Y'all come on support now. I, I've been revivals now, and 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 it'd it be about ten of us and 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 fifty, sixty of them. So let's turn it around. Let's make it more of us than it is of them. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. It's our church. It's our revival. Let's show up for our own revival. Can y'all do that? I expect to see y'all on Tuesday, Wednesday, and. Thursday. Come on, y'all. Let's do that, y'all. Let's do that, y'all. If all of mine clear, let's, let's go home. Let's go home. Everybody say. Everybody say. Everybody say. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us today. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, as you blessed us, oh God, that you've given us a word in our hearts to go through the week, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for, for our, our church, oh God, our church family, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that, that for, 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 for their life, O 